Hey guys, welcome back to my art channel. If you're new, hi, I'm May, and I do digital fluid art and digital pour art with cells. And today we're gonna to be looking at bubble cells and how to create bubble cells on your digital fluid art. So let's get started. First, you wanna open up Procreate. And once your Procreate's open, we're gonna create a new canvas. I like to start with a width of 5,000 and a height of 3,500. DPI 1,000 leaves you about 55 layers. I do this because I do sell my merch online and to put your products on clothes and things like that, you do need to have quite a high resolution. However, you can use whatever canvas size and DPI you like. This is what we'll be using with this tutorial. So once you have your dimensions, hit create. And we're gonna shrink the canvas so we can see all those edges. Now it's going to be picking our color palette. And this is the color palette that I've chosen for this tutorial. Feel free to screenshot this screen so that way if you would like to follow along with this tutorial with these exact colors, definitely go right ahead and we'll get started. And we'll have to pick a color that we're gonna have as our base. Keep in mind, you can always lay down a base and then do your liquid image on a second layer and play with it that way. However, for most of my tutorials, we'll be doing everything on one layer just to keep it simple and it's picking a base color i'm kind of liking this darker color but i actually might start with a lighter color this time as our base and now it's picking a brush last time we used spray paints fat nozzle but let's try something different and it's always fun to experiment with the different brushes and see how they work The artistic brushes do give an interesting effect. Let's go with Artistic Aurora for today. And then when laying down your paint, I like to on the settings, preferences, and under brush cursor, do make sure it's activated. It makes your life a little easier when seeing your size of your brush. You can tap the screen and see how big your brush strokes are going to be, which makes it a little easier. As you can see, if we start at, say, 50%, even though it shows you size, it's kind of nice to see what it looks like on the screen. The nice thing with this brush is it gives you a wide range of colors. Aurora is a very pretty brush to use. Um, but again, I'm going to want it quite a bit saturated. And I tend not to always use the same color, because one, you won't be able to see it, but if you're using a brush that has multi-color dimension with it. It's always fun to lay it down and see what kind of comes up. And then adding the darker colors, just kind of stamping it around. Like I said, just have fun with it. The whole point of this is to create art and have fun and try something you haven't really done before. I got it tan color, a few spots, and our white. You can always change your brush size and do different brushes or brush strokes. I tend to keep it the same when first laying down those colors. And I find after once you've laid down your colors, if you find you've lost some of them, you can always kind of go back in and relay down some of those original colors that kind of got lost. So that's kind of an interesting pattern. And now before we can do our bubble cells, we will need to create our acrylic pour or our digital fluid pour under liquify. Shrink your canvas down so you can see all the edges. Start with push. I like to do a high distortion, not quite max, but around 70%. Full momentum, full pressure, feel free to, like I said, if you're still getting used to this or trying it out for your first time, play around with the momentum and pressure and distortion and see how it works and get an idea of how everything functions. And again, having that uh, brush cursor activated really comes in handy with Liquify because depending on your canvas size, whether it's this size, smaller or larger, will affect how your size of your push option will look. Like right now, 60% looks about this big. However, if I had a smaller canvas, it would be quite a bit larger. And if I had a large canvas, it would be 
quite a bit smaller. So keep that in mind as well when creating your liquid images. And I like 74, 75. Get those nice round numbers. <laughs> okay, and then now it's just kind of pushing the paint on the screen and seeing how it moves. And getting that interesting feel. Like I said, when making these digital acrylic pores, I'm not going to be making anything super in-depth or taking my time with it, just because the point of this is to play with the cell types and figure out how to work them. I wasn't really liking how that turned out, and that's thing. If you don't like how it turns out, you can just hit reset and keep going until you get a feel of how that paint that you laid down is working with the liquify option. And I find the distortion can kind of muddy and make it look a little weird if you keep pushing it too much. So if I once I like how it looks, I will lower the distortion if I still want to keep moving it without looking or getting that too much of that rippled look to it. And kind of then pull the paint and see those layers. off there and lower your size. Again, looking at real poor art online and getting the references and kind of seeing how the paint moves and bleeds off the canvas you can really make your art look very interesting. Learning those techniques and seeing how things work. Sorry if you can hear me sniffling. It's winter right now, so it's a bit dry. Put the heat on. Which makes me sniffle. And like that tan, but I really want to bring in that blue. But not too too much because we don't want to lose that detail there. Just getting that feel of everything. I said, thinking about if you were actually physically tilting the screen, how that paint would kind of bleed off the canvas there. And I think that's kind of interesting. So from here, uh, we're going to go into creating bubble cells. And this technique I learned and taught myself with the expand option. Again, just to reiterate, having your brush cursor activated is also going to come in handy because this is how you're going to create your cells. And seeing that size is great because keep in mind, once you lay down a cell of any type, whether reconstruct, expanded, marble, and the other styles we'll get in later, once you lay them down, you can't hit backspace. They don't have a backspace and forward space option when in liquify. It's either you lay it down. If you don't like it, you hit reset, but it won't reset it just back one step. It will create everything back to that very original image of when we laid down the paint. So outside of liquify. So keep in mind. When doing that, when you're playing with these cells, do it on artwork that you don't necessarily want to keep <laughs> and play around with it quite a bit before you want to do pieces that you might want to keep or put up for sale so that way you don't get too upset if you don't like how it turned out and you want to reset it. So I find, like I said, we want to use expand. And these ones are kind of very simple. You kind of, with the expand tool, you kind of want to do it where a lot of color is lined up so it spreads the paint out in a circular motion. If you do it where there's very little color, so like I said, I'll do it here. Again, you're not going to see a whole lot just because there's not much color. Because the idea to create these cells is to separate the color that's already there. And I can actually bring that down a little bit more. And the nice thing is if you have your distortion up a little bit, it will make the circles a little more wonky looking, whereas if you have the distortion completely off, you'll get more of those nice, perfect, round, circled bubbles, which we'll do an example of both. But let's see where there's a lot of paint and layers. I actually like, right here is an interesting spot. So, and again, you're just going to hold down your brush and you can see the inside kind of turned a very interesting pattern. Like I said, with these ones, you really want to play with the sizes and the harder you, or the longer you hold it, the more it will push the 
paint outwards into a solid color. So if you want some more depth and interesting look to the inside of your bubble, try not to push for too long. And again, just playing with the size and keeping them close together so you get that. You can overlap them a little bit, but just getting that effect. When you overlap them, it kind of pushes them. It looks like they're overlapped, which is kind of an interesting effect as well. And you can kind of get like those packed little bubbles. And then just like on a real acrylic pour, when you get the little straggler cells that kind of pop up around it, make your cursor a little smaller and push them around. Like I said, in that one you can't see too, too well, but again, that's where you want to make sure to put them in areas where there's a bit of color because you're pushing that color out to create that expanded look. Or you can do it on the edge of two colors and try and get to bleed the two colors, which works as well. And then you can make it really, really tiny to do those little kind of blow torched cells. Because we're doing each individual cell, it will take a little longer than if you were to have a brush do it for you. It does give you a little bit more control of what you're doing as well, which is a bit nice. So, and those are them. Pretty cool. And another way we can do it as well, when you blow it out too, it creates a very interesting pattern on the canvas. Now another style you can do, opposed to overlapping them, is separating them a little bit and using the edge tool to bring them in so they can be joined up that way, which we'll do over here. I'll do a few a little further away. So you kind of get an idea. Make sure to find those colors so they bleed. And you can always do ones that are kind of off the same one, which is a little interesting. Probably should have picked a spot with a bit more color, but it still works. Ooh, that was a little too big. Oops. That's the same thing too, if you find it was a little too big, if you didn't hit it too hard and the moment it's not up too high, you can just let go and keep expanding it that way. All right, so these ones aren't quite touching, but if you wanted to have them touch but not overlapping how the other one did, but kind of more like that connecting pattern, you can use your edge tool and zoom right in. And same thing, you want to just very gently, cursor's a bit big, drag along your cur or your pencil along the edges to pull them inwards and to create that more of a it's that edge to it. And you can do it this way as well. And if you have a bigger area that you're pulling in, you can bring your cursor a little higher to get the bulk in, but I find you still want to work with it. Your cursor on the smaller side just because you don't want to distort your image too much and lose that bubble feel. Take your time. And there you go. And that's how you can bring them together with the edge tool, which is pretty awesome. And then again, going back to expand, and because every kind of poor art has the little stragglers. Some little stragglers in there. You don't have to do too many. The nice thing with these things, you can do as many or as little as you like. And then even super tiny. These ones are really finicky and harder to see, but you can really zoom in and do those really, really tiny kind of low torchy ones. A little time consuming, but it really does bring that piece together in a very interesting way. And if you do it on the edge, 
so that's where you can kind of watch how it's bleeding and kind of mix the two to create a different color and gets that kind of pull Got a few little blowtorch ones and there you go and they look pretty cool and that's with the distort but again you can always have absolutely no distortion where as you can see with these ones they kind of get that rippled edge but if you want to just do full straight on circles and have a very uniform look you can always do that as well just play with it and get those pretty straight circles and get a really big honking circle <laughs> and a bigger one nice thing is when you play with it on where there's lots of streaks of color is where you can really kind of get that dimension and make it look like it's a bubble popping through. Which is kind of cool. And then like I said, you can overlap them, which is kind of nice and make them look like they're one's popping out of another one. Just a kind of interesting look. Kind of reminds me of like Adams, the scaled Adams you see on like science diagrams. Kind of interesting. And there you go. And that's a very simple way to make expanded cells. You can see if you like said so you can make your entire canvas littered with them. And like I said, it might be a bit harder to see on the screen, so because I've did them quite a bit smaller, but again, you can always do really really big ones like let's say you don't like a particular area of uh, your painting but you like the color you care it's a bit muddy you can make a really big bubble and then kind of make extra little bubbles come off it the shape of the color that's around there that you're not necessarily liking how it looks but you can use that color to make the expanded bubbles and then kind of change the look of that area of your canvas, which I think is quite pretty. So there you have it. This is how you create expanded bubble cells on Procreate. And like I said, I do have a playlist that I'll have created where you can kind of watch through all these tutorials and get the hang of it. And definitely you can tag me if you recreate any of my art. I love seeing people's artwork and what they come up with with these ideas and I do have other tutorials that are not individual like this but I tend to create artwork once a week and more in-depth piece and I do trailers quick tutorials and longer tutorials going into my more detailed work that I sell online but yeah thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys next time when we create some more art see ya